Hey guys, Culprit here, and today we want to talk about something that DICE has done really well for Battlefield 4, a function that I really enjoy and that I wanted to share with you guys because it's something that you guys should absolutely be taking advantage of because when you do it correctly and you do it actively, you're going to have a tremendous advantage over your opponent, and that is the squad leader feature. Uh, the mechanics in the game, very simple to do. Mostly it's really just one mechanic that you need to do, and that is basically, you'll see me in the footage behind, which is domination on Zavod 311 uh, with some guys, some familiar faces in my squad, obviously. 008 guys and of course Cloud of Truth who has a channel himself you should check it out uh, we, I, I will note that we are not in uh, audio comms here we were just kind of ragtag got together um, playing together uh, you know we just hadn't kind of got coordinated yet and I believe it was one of the guys hey we need a squad leader I was like oh I realized it was me and I hadn't been marking anything and at this point I was being a kind of ADD squad leader. I was marking everything, and it's not always flags you want people to go and mark. Keep that in mind. Make sure you, you know, if you think a flag is important and a flag we already have, mark that too, and, and tell the guys to hold that. Um, but basically, you know, it's 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 just such a cool mechanic that I don't see so many people doing. So I wanted to kind of make a video talking about kind of the pros and a couple of the kind of the cons that come with it. But first, I mean, it's great for team play and coordination when you're not able to be in you know audio comms on TeamSpeak or in a Xbox party or whatever. But even if you are, you should still be using this function because it gives you a ton of points. I mean, it just it's almost like power leveling. It's like boosting almost because I mean, especially as a squad leader, you get so many bonuses when people just attempt to follow an order. And, you know, and then when they actually cap the flag, I mean, you're getting an extra 100 or so points. And with that, what you also do is you're able to keep your field upgrades pretty much full at all times. If you watch in the video, you see our you know field upgrade list is basically full the entire match. And that's just because of all these extra squad points you get just from one simple little mechanic. One other kind of thing that you don't so much, you know, it does, obviously doesn't matter so much in Domination, but in the larger game modes, think Conquest Large and whatever, it does set some waypoints for you. If you see on the mini-map, you see some of the, you know, it draws a line from where you are to the, the capture, you know, the point that the squad leader is designated. This can be quite helpful in Conquest Large. People get a little disoriented. They, you know, they kind of lose track of what flag is what, maybe where they are. It, it just kind of, especially if you're playing with randoms who might not be as experienced with the game as you are, kind of at least gives them a direction of work. And, and you find that... Even when you're playing with guys, like I have the fortune to be playing with people I know and guys I trust that I'll play with all the time, and they're always going to try to do the right thing and, and, and try to win. Uh, but even if you're playing, I've, I've done this now with randoms and, and squads I do not know anybody in, and people kind of are looking for direction. So if you just give them a simple task, like attack A, hold B, they will actually do it. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, but sure, anytime you can give them a little bit of incentive, and people love points, remember, especially right now, early in the game, people are still leveling, still unlocking, people love points. So it, it, they will be more prone to follow those orders. Now, I should note that there you will take some hit hit while being a squad leader as I've noticed. Um, the interface is a little wonky and I don't know if you're going to see it in this gameplay but I got killed quite a few times. Now, I did this role basically all night with these guys and I enjoyed it. I, once I started got, we got rolling and I saw the benefits of it obviously I was just kind of like oh, I want to kind of keep using this get the ins and outs of it so I can do a video and share it with you guys. The biggest thing is it can be frustrating. Now basically what you do is you look at the objective and you hit the spot button on PC it's Q on you know uh, the consoles I think it was like select or whatever it is I have, I have not played in a while uh but you don't want to like hold it because that'll bring up the comma rows and you don't want to hit it spam it too quickly because then you it's going to be like you're trying to spot an enemy you almost have to like tap tap you know like a little pause in between and then it will designate the flag sometimes it works sometimes it does not and i was killed quite a few times basically standing there staring at a flag up in the sky obviously the closer you get to it the harder it is you have to look vertically uh at a bigger angle and and you just get shot in the back and it's frustrating but you have to understand that the benefits right there you know outweigh the negatives by a lot and th that death you might take there that setback is going to be blown away by the added points and things you get in the match by doing this now on top of that aside from just getting those couple weird deaths you might get your gameplay probably will take a little bit of a hit because your focus isn't just on the engagement in front of you it's not on your surroundings as much as you're kind of like i said you almost have to be watching the mini map more than you're watching your surroundings and that's because it's, it's up to you as a squad leader to kind of be anticipating what the enemy might do next you have to notice the trends how are they doing it are they doing ring around the rosy and domination or are they continually throwing themselves at a particular flag on conquest or, or rush you know are they heavily defending 
defended on one MCOM but not the other. That's up to you. You have to recognize that. You have to see opportunities and, and kind of help your, you know, indicate to your squad mates that, hey, maybe we should go for this MCOM. You know, the, uh, the, rest of, uh, the rest of our team is about to arm A. Let me give you the directive to go get B and maybe we could take advantage of that. And, and dominate the same thing. Don't always just mark the next flag that isn't captured. If you're holding A flag and you have B flag and you don't want to get C, think on Shanghai or something, hey, maybe just tell them to hold B because you know the enemy is going to be going for B pretty hard. You get just as many points for defending it and all those types of things. So don't be afraid to just hold the two points and let them know, hey, I'm, pr I'm prioritizing this flag. It's a power position. We must hold this and we'll, we'll win that way. So you're, you're kind of keeping track of all this at the same time if you're a normal say 2kd player maybe your performance don't be alarmed if it's going to dip a little bit because again you're paying attention to a lot more than just what's right in front of you what's right in front of your crosshairs now with that said i do think that's actually quite a fair balance i think there should be a price for being a squad leader leadership is not easy you know keeping track of those extra variables are not easy um, it shouldn't be for everyone. I think it should be another kind of, not class, but another responsibility or role that could really kind of differentiate players in this game. And it's one that I plan to actually use a lot. And I think any competent player really will end up using this a lot because it's literally free points. You're going to go capture that point anyway. You might as well get the extra 50 to 100 to whatever points uh, while you're doing it. Now, I get asked all the time on comments and things, how do I get players to play like a team? You know, I, I don't get to play with people. I'm not fortunate enough. You know, and people just play randomly and they snipe from the roof. So, well, first thing you should do is you should look for a better squad. If, if that's all people are doing, you know, you should just be, you know, just play with someone else. You know, that's the beauty of it. If you aren't playing with anybody you know, you're not tied to that squad. You can switch whenever you want to. Look for a squad, first of all, that is active that has a lot of kills and deaths doesn't really matter if they got a three or four kd they could be a one kd but if they have a lot of kills a lot of deaths that shows that they're in they're in the fight they're up on the objectives because that's where you're going to get kills that's where you're going to die if someone you know everybody else on the server is like 15 and 15 ish and some guy's 10 and 0 well watch out because chances are that guy's sniping or doing something cheese ball like that but find a good squad that's active, try to get in there if you can, and then work your way to squad leader. And then you know, if you have these active guys, just start giving them directives. You'll be surprised at how often they will actually go towards that way. A lot of times people get two caps, they don't really know what to do next. If you have them and you're giving them directives as squad leader, they will a lot of times follow them. And lastly, what you should do if you're, you're trying to get a squad that's, you know, you want to be active, you want to PTFO, but you're having a really bad day, just start your own squad. Start kicking ass. Uh, basically, you got to think, what are like-minded players like you? You're looking for people that are going to play the game right. You're looking for people that are going to play the game like a team, right? Well, other people are looking for the same thing. So join your own squad, start it up, and just start doing well. I know it's hard when you can't spawn on people. Get on the objective, cap it, get some points, heals, revives, but just get to the top of the leaderboard. People are going to see that. Of course, having a positive KD is always attractive to other players, and you'll find that those like-minded people will tend to start joining on you. It's not going to happen in a minute. It's not going to happen maybe even in one match. It might be third, third or fourth match before you start seeing the results and start realizing that you kind of have a decently rounded squad now, and you're getting a lot more done, and that's when you should really kick in the squad leader functions, and you'll see the kind of whole kind of squad start to gel just a little bit as much as a random squad can and you're gonna do a lot better and chances are you're gonna win that match and you're pretty much definitely gonna get a squad at that point so there you go guys i just wanted to share that with you i thought it was something that dice did really well for battlefield 4 uh it was in battlefield 3 but it didn't work as easily in my opinion and there wasn't as much incentive with the field upgrades and stuff to use it so make sure you give it a shot like i said it's a little wonky sometimes it can take some getting used to but once you have it kind of down it's really a cool tool. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Do you use this all the time? Uh, you know, how do you think they might be able to improve this? Uh, that would be pretty cool to see them flesh this out somehow. Uh, let me know in the comments. Open up a discussion. I always like to answer to you guys. And I will talk to you soon, guys. Thanks so much. Take care.